In a busy neighborhood in China, there was once an apartment building where people lived happily. They often gathered downstairs to talk and take a walks. Something happened in the year 2020 that changed all that. Residents started moving out, and some were too scared to go to the bathroom at night. Real estate prices dropped by half, as if under some kind of curse. Welcome to Red Eastern True Crime. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe to my channel. Let's start this story. On July 5, 2020. A 53-year-old woman named Lai Huili, who lived in Hangzhou, China, went missing after returning home. Her elder daughter reported her disappearance to the police 40 hours later and posted missing person flyers in the neighborhood. Television crews even interviewed Miss Lai's husband, Xu Guoli. He explained that his wife was with him when he went to the bathroom at midnight, but when he woke up at 5 a.m. She was gone. Her phone and keys were still in the house, but her pajamas and a pair of black shoes were missing. He also expressed concern, saying, quote, "What am I going to do with my daughter? What is going to happen to my life? When will my wife come back? I don't know if she's alive or dead." The video of the interview quickly went viral. Police reacted quickly. Examining 96 surveillance cameras in the neighborhood, reviewing 6,000 hours of footage, draining the community pond, and thoroughly searching the rooftop and the underground garage, visited hundreds of neighbors' homes, inspecting cabinets, refrigerators, and other areas. Later, law enforcement spent more than 20 hours extracting waste from the community's septic tank and soon made a discovery. Miss Lai, born in 1967 in Hangzhou, Zhejiang Province, China, was retired at the time of the incident. She worked as a janitor for a foreign company, earning a total monthly income of approximately $1,100. Miss Lai was previously married and had a daughter with her ex-husband. She married Xu in 2008 and gave birth to a second daughter the following year. Xu. Born in 1965 in a rural area of Shaoxing, Zhejiang, had an adopted older brother and a younger brother. His family was quite poor, especially after his mother died when he was only four years old. His father worked hard to provide it for the family. At the age of 19, Xu joined the military for three years and then returned to his hometown to work in a glass factory. In 1987. Xu ventured to Hangzhou to start a small fish feed business. He rented a house there and met Miss Lai, the daughter of his landlord. In his youth, Xu was handsome with thick hair, and they were attracted to each other, beginning a sweet romance that lasted for three years. However, when they wanted to marry, Miss Lai's parents strongly objected to their daughter marrying an outsider from a humble background. As a result, the two went their separate ways. Miss Lai later married and had a daughter through her parents' arrangement. Xu continued with various small businesses and later moved to Shanghai. He worked as a duck butcher, saved some money, and started trading in animal feed. During this time, he met his wife, and they had a son. Xu and Miss Lai lived separate lives without any connection. In 2000. Xu started a duck farming business, investing all his savings, and accumulating large debts. By a stroke of luck, they met again, and Miss Lai helped Xu financially. As they met more often, their original affection surfaced, and they made a heartfelt decision. They decided they had to be together, and this time, no one could stop them. Xu and Miss Lai firmly proposed the divorce to their respective spouses. Xu's wife didn't agree, and Xu even threatened her by grabbing her by the neck. Miss Lai's husband also rejected the divorce, so Miss Lai threatened to spend all their household money and go into more debt. Xu once confided to a friend that, in addition to their emotional bond, marrying Miss Lai was also a way for him to get help paying for his debt. 
She even agreed to provide some financial support to his ex-wife. After their divorce, neither of them had custody of their children. Xu moved to Hangzhou, and in 2009, their daughter was born. In 2010, the land Xu used for duck farming in Shanghai was taken over, and he received compensation about a hundred sixty thousand dollars. Later. The village where Miss Lai's ID was registered got demolished. Compensation was calculated based on the family's population, with each person entitled to 55 square meters of living space. Miss Lai was initially allocated a 55 square meter house, and her family quickly moved in. A second 110 square meter house was under construction and would take several years to complete. Xu and Miss Lai seemed to have a loving relationship in the eyes of their family and neighbors. Miss Lai was capable, managed the household well, and had a strong personality. She took control of the family's finances, and indeed, most of the wealthy came from her. Xu was more humble and accommodating to his wife. After receiving the compensation money, Xu ventured into futures and stocks. Persevering even when he faced significant losses, at one point, Xu even tried to convince Miss Lai to provide him with funds to trade stocks. Miss Lai firmly refused, which led to conflicts between them. And Miss Lai's affection for Xu gradually faded, and she expressed more complaints and disdain towards him. After losing money, Xu found a job as a driver at the Hangzhou Metro maintenance base. Earning about six hundred dollars a month, in 2015, Xu's son from his previous marriage was accepted to a university in Hangzhou. Xu had asked Miss Lai if he could give one of their two apartments to his son, but she not only refused, also didn't put Xu's name on the second 110 square meter house when it was completed. In China, if a title deed has both spouses' names on it. It's considered joint property. However, if it's only one person's name, the other spouse's has no claim unless he or she can prove that it was acquired during the marriage. That's why many married couples are very concerned about having their names on property deeds. In early 2020, Xu and Miss Lai received their second new apartment of 110 square meters. Miss Lai asked Xu to finance the renovation. But Xu was upset. He felt that even though their family had two apartments in the bustling area and a substantial amount of savings, total about two million dollars in assets, he seemed to have little say in these matters, and he felt disrespected by his wife. On the morning of Saturday, July 4, 2020, Xu and Miss Lai went to the hospital together. Xu had a dental appointment. While Miss Lai had to pick up medication for high blood pressure, in the afternoon, Xu went to their new apartment to check on the progress of the renovations. Meanwhile, Miss Lai took their daughter out to buy books and a birthday cake. Around 5 p.m., this mother and daughter returned home, chatting and laughing as they took the elevator upstairs. That evening, they celebrated their daughter's 11th birthday. For dinner, Xu made meatballs in a meat grinder. As usual, she handed Miss Lai and the daughter glasses of milk, watched them finish, and then a little after 10 p.m., the whole family went to bed. On Monday, July 6, Miss Lai's company called her family to tell them that she hadn't come to work all day. Miss Lai's older daughter, who had been unable to reach her mother, became concerned. She and her cousin reported her mother's disappearance and printed up missing persons flyer to post around the area. She even offered a fifty thousand dollars reward for the information. At that point, Miss Lai had been missing for forty hours. Police determined that the last time she was seen on camera was Saturday afternoon, when she rode the elevator home with her younger daughter. She subsequently gave several interviews to local television stations. Saying that he and his wife had no conflicts, that everything seemed normal. When asked about his wife's absence throughout Sunday, he admitted that it was a bit unusual and mentioned a minor disagreement, assuming that she had gone to her older daughter's place. 
Internet users speculated, with some suggesting that community staff may have been involved in Miss Lai's disappearance, allowing her to evade surveillance. Others speculated that Miss Lai might have run away with another man, possibly in a car from the underground garage. But suspicion also fell on Xu, with some suggesting that her household's water usage be checked. After a thorough police investigation, it was determined that Miss Lai hadn't left her home since her return, and a foul play was highly likely. Xu's neighbors mentioned that they hadn't heard any unusual noises in the past two days, except for one neighbor downstairs who mentioned hearing continuously toilet flushing noises on Saturday night. Upon investigation, it was found that the water consumption for July 5th only had reached two tons. Two weeks after the initial report, police turned their investigative efforts to the community septic tanks. They used several vacuum and sewage trucks to extract material from these tanks. Upon examination, they discovered what appeared to be human tissue inside. After conducting DNA tests and comparing them to Miss Lai's daughter, they confirmed that the remains belonged to Miss Lai, who had been missing for 18 days. On July 23rd, she was arrested, and during interrogation, he admitted to the crime. He confessed to adding sleeping pills to his wife and daughter's milk. That night, while Miss Lai was deeply asleep, he taped her mouth shut and suffocated her with a towel and a pillow until she stopped breathing. There was a moment when Miss Lai awoke and called out Xu's name, and although he hesitated briefly, he continued to suffocate her. Afterwards, Xu dismembered Miss Lai, placed her flesh in the meat grinder, and flushed it down the toilet piece by piece. During the day, after sending his daughter to her training class, Xu went out several times to dispose of the remaining bones in black garbage bags, which he placed in various trash cans. He then cleaned the house carefully. During the trial on May 14, 2021, Xu confessed to four reasons for killing his wife. First, there was a significant accumulation of daily grievances between them. Second, there was an ongoing dispute about the properties they owned, with his wife refusing to add his name. Third, she mentioned that Miss Lai had done something wrong in the past that he couldn't let go of, but he didn't specify what it was. Fourth, they had a significant disagreement about their daughter's education, and his wife wouldn't let him be involved. On the night of July 4th, Miss Lai accidentally cut her hand while cleaning the meat grinder that she used to make meatballs. This led to a heated argument between them. Although she eventually backed down, she described his mental state during this time as extremely unstable, even contemplating suicide. He explained that the conflicts between him and his wife had been building up with no outlet, and he didn't want to fight in front of their daughter. She tearfully stated, I love her, I hate her, but this seemed to be the only way. He deeply regretted his actions, but realized it was too late to reverse them. On July 26, 2021, she was sentenced to death for premeditated murder. He later appealed. His 12-year-old daughter wrote a letter of forgiveness herself and submitted it to the court. However, after careful consideration, the court felt that due to her young age, she might not fully understand the situation, and it was possible that she had influenced her to write the letter. On April 8, 2022, the court upheld the death sentence. Xu was executed on March 21, 2023. After the incident, Miss Lai and Xu's daughter were raised by her sister. Xu's gruesome act of killing and dismembering his wife had a profound impact on society. His calm demeanor during television interviews after the murder, something most people couldn't do, suggests his cold-heartedness and narcissism. While in public, he appeared to be a respectful and accommodating husband. Beneath the surface, he harbored a sinister desire to eliminate his wife in any argument. He internalized the various societal frustrations, 
including damaged self-esteem, unmet expectations, loss of control, diminished family status, and economic dissatisfaction. Unable to change this state, Xu believed that he could regain control by getting rid of his wife. To respect the family feelings and prevent possible copycat crimes, law enforcement officials have not disclosed the details of Xu's crime. Some individuals reported that human tissue were also found in the meat grinder. Some sellers on platforms such as Taobao and Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok, shamelessly used this tragedy for marketing, prompting meat grinders with insensitive slogans. For example, they used phrases such as a must-have tool for erasing evidence in marital disputes. These heartless individuals turned the suffering of others into a joke. In addition, some used the keywords such as septic tank, meat grinder, and two tons of water to intimidate women and general traffic. Here are some few examples. Some says, Last night, after arguing with my wife, I mentioned the septic tank warning. Today, my wife did all the chores. And some says, Now I'm still young, I can't stand it. In a few years, I will just use two tons of water directly. And this says, If you continue to argue, your husband's meat grinder is about to order them. This lack of respect for the decreased is truly disgusting and causes secondary damage to the families of the victim. It has even led to some gender conflicts and instilled fear of marriage in some single women. They say, if you are not married, you can be at home, in the mall, in the club, or in the bar. But if you are married, you might be in the refrigerator, in the walls, in the septic tank, in the sewer, in the mountains, in the rivers, or even in the meat grinder. That's today's story. Please feel free to share your thoughts and opinions. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel.